Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and today we're saddling up and we're reviewing the Squire Classic Vibe 60s Mustang Bass. Let's do this. This is the Squire Classic Vibe 60s Mustang Bass. This bass is basically the Squire version of Fender's Mustang Bass, which has been around since the 60s and has come and gone multiple times. This bass features a maple neck with a 30-inch scale, 19-fret Indian Laurel fretboard. This neck also has a really nice gloss finish to it. The body is oddly enough made of natto or nato, which is a cheap Asian wood. It's very odd that they're not using poplar here, as the entire classic vibe line minus the 50s P-Bass is made of poplar for the body. The body is painted in a beautiful surf green, and a classic white with a torque pit guard is also available. For electronics, we have a completely passive setup, with a Fender-designed Alnico split coil pickup, and a volume and tone knob. So I believe that this is the second cheapest short scale that you can get from the Fender Squire lineup. The cheapest being the Fender Bullet Bass, coming in at around, I think, $200, something like that. These are priced at $400, just like the rest of the Classic Vibe 4 strings. One interesting thing about this bass is the string-through construction for the body. I believe this is the only Squire Classic Vibe that has that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyways, I know you guys are wondering, how does this thing sound? You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. Now before I go any further, big shout out to Jackie, owner and proprietor of JD's Hair Salon, sculptor of my magnificent beard, and owner of this bass. She let me borrow it for a little bit so I could do a review, so I just want to give her a big thank you. Now onto the bass. I gotta say off the bat, the neck is really, really nice. It has a gloss finish like all the other classic vibe basses, and the fretwork is pretty good. I have no issues with fret buzz or fret noise or anything like that. No fret edges poking out of the side, and it feels relatively sturdy. So this particular example is strung up with flat wounds, and I think it sounds really nice. This Fender designed pickup really gives it a nice classic tone, and though there is a little bit of noise with all my lights around here, turning the tone down to 50% takes care of that, no problem. Speaking of the tone, let's go over the different tones that this thing has. We'll check out the tone at 100%, 50%, and all the way down. Here's the tone all the way up. Not bad. Now here's the tone at 50%. And here's the 
here's the tone all the way down. Overall, it doesn't sound bad, but how does she slap? I don't know what it is, but the E string seems to be a little bit dead or muffled. I don't know what's causing that. So at $400, this thing is right at the price point of a used Mexican precision bass from Fender. How does it compare? Let's do a quick tone comparison. Even though the strings are going to be different, the Squire here is going to have flats, the Fender is going to have rounds, but let's see what they sound like back to back. I'm going to keep the tone at 50% for both basses. Though I think both basses achieve a nice fat vintage tone, the Fender has a bit more output. That's not to say the pickup in this isn't good, because I think it sounds pretty good overall. I just wanted to point that out. So here's my final thoughts on the Squire Classic Vibe 60s Mustang. It achieves a nice fat vintage tone, and it has a really nice and well-built neck. However, things aren't all sunshine and rainbows over here. The quality control on the body, in my opinion, is atrocious. You have some paint debris on the neck, the fit and finish around the neck pocket, the string ferrules, the pick guard, pretty much everything dealing with the body is lackluster, to put it nicely. For a $400 instrument, I'd expect a little bit better, especially from what I've seen out of the Squire Paranormal. However, this is another Indonesian Squire, and I found the quality on those to be lackluster compared to the Chinese-made Squires. The Paranormal that I had was nearly flawless. Though that is only one example, every single Indonesian that I've had has had some sort of QC issue. And I think that if Squire is serious about pushing the Classic Vibe series up market, QC needs to be a bit higher on their priorities list. This thing is pretty neck heavy due to the very light body. The weight overall isn't very substantial. This thing weighs only about six and a half to seven pounds, but I feel like most of that weight is concentrated in the neck, which again, feels very high quality and well-built, especially compared to the body here. So what am I gonna rate the Squire Classic Vibe 60s Mustang? Ugh. I'm gonna rate this bass two claws out of five. The strange choice in materials for the body, combined with the really lackluster QC, honestly, this is the worst QC I've seen on a body out of the Squire factory. If I were up to me and this was my first bass and I wanted a short scale, I'd probably go to Rondo Music and get one of the short scale jazz basses, or go a little bit more upmarket and look at a secondhand Gibson Les Paul tribute, or one of the Sterling Stingray short scales. Say that five times fast. Sterling Stingray short scale, Stingray Sterling. Yeah. So in conclusion, I wish the QC was a bit better on this $400 instrument, especially compared to the stuff that's coming out of the Squire China factory and their competitors. But overall, if you're in the market for a vintage Fender style short scale, 
it's pretty much slim pickings in this price range. So check one of these out and maybe the one in your hands might have a bit better QC going on on the body. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about the Squire Classic Vibe 60s Mustang. And as always, until we groove again.